we got a fun project today. We got a timing belt, tensioner, accessory belt, and water pump. I'm gonna put them in this focus. It's a two liter SPI, 2002. Make sure you have all the parts before you do this. Uh, also make sure that you have some new coolant to put in. If it's a good time to, when you're doing the water pump, it's a good time to change your coolant. I changed the coolant recently, so I'm just gonna put it back in. But you're always gonna lose some, so make sure you got some ready to go, or you got a spare vehicle to take you up to the parts place. It's also important that you replace these parts at the recommended service interval. You can find those service intervals in a service manual or an owner's manual, which I don't have, but it would be in your glove box. Um, or you can just find them online. Uh, and make sure you do these parts pretty often, not often, but at the, at the service interval. Some parts are a little more lenient uh, towards going over their service interval, but the time belt, that's something you don't want to mess with, because that can cause serious damage if that fails for whatever reason. Make sure you're real careful when you do this. This is a procedure that can seriously damage your engine if you do it wrong. Timing belts, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you time it improperly, if you turn the motor over and it's not timed properly or, it's not ti or the belt's not in there, you run the risk of bending the valves and causing internal engine damage. So make sure you know what you're doing when you do this or don't do it at all <laughs> uh, and take it somewhere. Uh, it's it's a pretty complicated and, and intense procedure. Uh, if you have any experience with that and you just never done it on one of these, or you're pretty mechanically inclined, uh, feel free to you know use this video to help you out. I mean that's what it's for. One of these books for 22 bucks will really uh, really help you out. Now you might be asking yourself, self, why do you replace the timing belt and the water pump at the same time? While the service interval on those is uh, about the same, um, and if you want to get to one, you have to get to the other pretty much on, on most cars. Uh, it's not entirely true, but on a lot of cars the uh, time belt uh, covers the water pump and to get to one you have to get to the other. So uh, it's kind of like doing the rear main seal when you have the clutch apart. I mean, because you, or if you have the transmission off you might as well replace the clutch just because they're, they're kind of hard to get to. Alright, well, let me get all this crap off my hood. You want to do this with the engine cold. You don't want to be messing with coolant when the engine's warmed up. All you'll do is burn your head. Oops. Alright, so I'm going to set the parking brake, put it in neutral, open the hood, remove the hubcap, and now if you don't have air tools, loosen the lug nuts, but don't remove them. I have an impact gun, so I'm just going to jack the car up and then buzz those lug nuts off with that. Alright, like I said, jack up the car. Always use jack stands. Hydraulic jacks can fail. All right, let's get these wheels off. Might as well check out the brakes. There's a little bit of rust on there just because this car's been sitting. Um, but no scoring or anything bad. Pads have plenty of material left. And Looks like we got even material on both pads, so that means that the, the caliper's in good condition. And everything else under here looks pretty good. There's no play in the, the tie rods. Or the, the... What's it called? Sway bar links. The springs look good. Brake line looks good. No leaks, wetness, or fat spots. Okay, so now we're going to go underneath vehicle and loosen up this bolt right here which removes this little splash shield which covers the belts. Normally there normally there would be two bolts holding it on but you can see that my cover's cracked. <laughs> so oh well. Right. We'll just lay this aside. Now we can see the front pulley there on the crankshaft, accessory belt, and the compressor for air conditioning. Alright, to access the timing belt and the accessory belts, you will need to remove the expansion tank and the power steering reservoir. You don't need to disconnect the hoses to them, just disconnect them from where they're mounted to the body. This coolant reservoir has a 10 millimeter bolt holding it over here. Then in the back, 
there's a little metal clip there, or a little plastic clip around a metal tab. Just get a flat screwdriver and ease it over that. Unclip these hoses from the core support there to the power steering reservoir. And you can just lay this to the side. Power steering reservoir just pulls straight up. And then you can lay it to the side as well. Here you can see a motor mount. Uh, that cover there covers the timing belt, but it's also structural. Go ahead and support the engine from underneath. You can just use a jack on the oil pan. The oil pan on this is aluminum, so it'll hold up the weight. Don't put it right in the middle, just put it on one of the edges. And then remove that motor mount. Just gonna buzz these off real fast. Once that's loose, just pull straight out. Ooh, this motor mount's definitely failed. Check this out. Yep, and where's that split? I just saw a split. Yeah. Bet you that's causing all that vibration when I started up cold. Now this cover is held on by four 13 millimeter bolts. There's here, 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 and here. All right, now we need to remove this accessory belt. And if you look at that tensioner there, you'll see a, a 3 8 on each side square. And 3 8 ratchets have squares with 3 8 on the side. So put your ratchet in there, set it to tightening, and then you just uh, pull the tension off the belt like that. Now this is going to take two hands. Pull this up, and then just work the belt off one of these pulleys, power steering pulley is easy because it's here at the top. There we go. Alright, this belt didn't want to come off from the top. I couldn't really reach everything. So I'm getting it from the bottom. Alright, got the whole thing out. Sweet. That big pulley down there at the bottom with what looks like a gear on it is the crank pulley. And that needs to come off next. Now before you take that off, you want to make sure that the engine is at top dead center and to do that you need to make sure that the timing mark which is that pointed arrow right there is lined up with there's a notch in the cylinder head or a dot there it is you can just barely see it that dot that makes that means that the engine is at top dead center on the compression stroke on piston number one so i'm just going to get a big wrench and turn the crankshaft pulley which is accessible through the wheel well now until those marks are done. Now we're going to try to remove the uh, main pulley bolt. Hopefully my impact gun is strong enough to do this. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's nice. Sometimes these are a pain in the ass to get off. We got lucky today. Now, hopefully this. Oh, we got lucky twice today. Oh, we got lucky. Very lucky. This just slid right off. Sometimes these are pretty much pressed onto the crankshaft, and you need a special puller. And, uh, Advanced Auto Parts is closed already today. Alright, so there's the lower pulley for the, for the timing belt, and you can also see the timing marks there are lined up. See the little point on the crankshaft lines up with the indent or the notch in the case there. So here comes the fun part. Now we get to actually mess with the timing belt. Now make sure once you get this off you don't rotate the crankshaft or rotate the camshaft at all. Uh, I mean if it moves a tiny bit in either direction you're probably alright. 
but you don't want you don't want to be turning them. If you do that, you can bend the valves, uh, possibly break them. Most likely not. But if you bend them, it doesn't matter. It's just as bad. It's not going to run, and if it does run, it's going to have really low compression. All right. So that that pulley right there in the middle of the screen, that's the tensioner pulley, and it works similar to the to the pulley for the drive belts, the accessory belts, except it doesn't have a square hole. It's got a eight millimeter hex hole, like an Allen hole. So we're going to put in an Allen sock or a Allen wrench and just move it out of the way. This tensioner doesn't really feel very good. It's not very tight. Um, and I'll show you why this needs to be replaced anyway. It's pretty bad. So just move that out of the way and then slip your belt off. Once the belt is off, you can let go of the tensioner. And the belt will just loose. Back in the wheel well here. We're just going to take this belt, drop it right out. It's done. Now, I don't have any records, but I believe this to be the original timing belt and tensioner. You may have seen this in the other video, but that tensioner is pretty bad. Bearings are supposed to have zero play. This one has quite a bit. They're also supposed to make almost no noise. Alright, I already loosened it off, but just get a 10mm wrench and undo this bolt in the center. That intention should come right out. There it is. You see that shiny little rectangle or square there on the bottom edge there? That lines up with that little bump out there. So when you put the new one on, make sure you put it in the same orientation. Next is the water pump. I probably should have already started draining the uh, coolant, but I didn't. So go ahead and drain the coolant. If you're going to use it again, make sure you put it. Alright, so the car is peeing into a bucket there. We're going to disconnect these hose clamps while we're waiting. So just get a pair of pliers and do those. Alright, once you've removed the hoses, I don't really want to bore you with how to remove hoses. Um, you can go ahead and remove the three bolts that hold, oh, I'm sorry, four bolts that hold the water pump to the block. It should be 13 millimeter. Alright, well I just removed those four bolts and you can see a little bit of coolant, we coolant leaping out of there. Um, there may or may not be some coolant left in the block. I would think that most of the coolant ran out from the, uh, the radiator because of the lower radiator hose being lower than the water pump, but uh, I'm probably wrong, so just have something underneath it here to catch it uh, when it when it starts leaking and you pull the water pump off. Alright, I'm just going to stick a screwdriver in here. Yep, quite a bit of coolant falling into that bucket. Alrighty. So there's the old water pump. Got some interesting stuff on it. So there's the block. That round piece that you're looking right into, not the hole, but that cylinder, is uh, the cylinder liner actually for the number one piston. Pretty neat. So now I just got to scrape all this gasket stuff off of here, and we're ready to start putting this car back together. I hate scraping gaskets. So I figure you probably hate wa watching me scrape gaskets. But it's finally done.